Hi, I'm Jeff Ludy, the owner of Houston Window Experts. Thank you so much for joining me for this video about the Pella Impervia Sliding Door 2.0. Yes, 2.0. There's some really cool upgrades to this and I want to talk all about it. Hey, just a quick reminder before we get started that if you live in the Houston area, I'd love to get a chance to meet you, to talk to you, to show you around our beautiful showroom. We have over a dozen brands of windows and doors to choose from, something for every home, almost every home for almost every budget, almost every project. So let me, let me try. If you don't live in the Houston area, you should check out jeffslist.com. I have people all over the country say, Jeff, do you know a great window company near me? Actually, I do know a lot of great window companies all over the country. We all kind of network together. So check that out. Maybe I can help you. Pella Windows and Doors. Have you heard of them? They've been around since 1925. If you haven't heard of Pella, welcome to earth. Pella, Anderson, those are the big ones that are out there. You've probably heard of some others like Simonton and Marvin. But Pella has been making great products, and this is really exciting. Now, fiberglass is something that's somewhat new. I mean, fiberglass has been around since the 80s when it comes to windows, but like we're seeing more and more of it. Marvin has a product, Milgard has a product, Fiberframe has a product, Comfort Line has a product, Pella has a product. So you're seeing more and more of it. And what I like about fiberglass is that fiberglass is very, very strong, it's very durable. Fiberglass is stronger than vinyl, okay? And it's got some of the same properties that you would get out of having like a vinyl window as far as like thermal efficiency and things like that. So fiberglass is really pretty cool. Now, Anderson is the big competitor to Pella. Pella and Anderson, those are like your General Motors and your Ford, right? They're always fighting to be the number one. And Pella makes this product to compete with one of the products that Anderson makes called Fibrex. If you've ever had anybody from Anderson out to your house, they talk about their product called Fibrex, how it's a composite, how wonderful it is. This goes head to head with that. And Pella makes some pretty strong claims. I'm gonna grab their brochure and just read this to you because um, they're claiming here that it won't dent. On average, it's 100 times more impact resistant than Anderson Fibrex. It won't bend. On average, it's 10 times stronger than Anderson Fibrex in a bend test and it won't break. On average, it's 20 times stronger the tensile strength of Anderson Fibrex. Now, I'm no scientist and I don't run a laboratory, but I made a video where I compare the uh, Anderson Fibrex to the Pella Impervia, where we do our own simulated over at the distribution center kind of torture test. And I'm gonna put a link to that up there. I think you might wanna watch that. One other video you're probably gonna to wanna to watch because I'm not gonna get into all the specifics about the actual material. It's called Duracast, that's the trademark they gave it. I'm gonna put a video link right there that also you might wanna check out next where I actually go into the product line itself, talk about it, and there's more details about that. So that might be beneficial to you. So what are the two main ingredients to a sliding door or to a window? Well, glass, right? And frame, frame and glass, those are the two things. In this particular unit, they're using cardinal glass, and there's many different options for different parts of the world, whatever kind of climate you're dealing with. And then, of course, they're using their Fibrex, excuse me, their um, Duracast material in this Impervia product. So there's two things there that you're working with. Now, what I like about this fiberglass product that they're doing is that the glass and the Fibrex, it's, oh God, I gotta stop saying Fibrex. See, now I got that in the head. Please forgive me. The Impervia's Duracast and the glass, since they're both made from similar materials, sand, right? The expansion and contraction rate is uh, almost identical. So if you live in a climate where you get a lot of heat expansion and contraction, heat and cold, heat and cold, heat and cold, you're gonna have less failure between the glass and the frame because they're gonna travel and expand and contract at the same rate. Just a real bonus about that. Let's talk first about why you would want a sliding door anyway. I've got a great video about sliding doors. I'm not gonna put it up there. Just go look at the channel. I think you're gonna like it, but look how much view you get, right? Compared to a French door, like French doors are gonna have a much wider profile here. You're gonna lose a lot of glass. And so people have often thought about French doors as being the nice door, you know, like, oh, I want a nice door, give me a French door. Hey, French doors are nice, don't get me wrong. We still sell a lot of them, but this is a new hot thing. People are buying these new, really cool, crisp, modern looking sliding doors because you're gonna get a lot more glass. You're gonna get a nice, smooth, clean finish on it, right? A, a typical French door is a more traditional. It's got a lot of like bevels and contours. This is nice and square, 90 degree angles, really crisp and clean, more glass and they're safe. You know, we used to think that sliding doors weren't secure because you could just get, you could lift it up and take it off of its hinge and push it inside. You remember, you remember that? People used to be worried about sliding doors, but not anymore. Sliding doors now are very secure. In fact, I wanna show you something about this door. By the way, it opens quite gracefully and easily. It's just really easy to operate. 
If you notice here, there are two different um, holes in here. These two little ports actually have a locking mechanism that if you look over on this side, you see connects over here onto this side as well. So here are two different latches, right? So we got two points of contact. This is what we call a multi-point lock. And what it does is these two engage like this, right? They go in here, they, they hook into there, and now you cannot lift this to get it out of the track to easily come into somebody's house. So uh, come on in here, step inside my house, please. Thank you, I wanna show you. Now you can see here that as I go to close it, it closes nice and secure in there. And I've got this little thumb mechanism right here. I love that. Instead of having another visual interruption here with a, a turn latch of some kind, right? It's actually built into the handle. So when I close the door, I just put my thumb on there and it's locked. When I wanna open the door, I just put my finger there and it's unlocked, locked, unlocked. You see when it's locked, it's very secure, nice and stiff, holds it up against there really nice and tight. Unlock it, real easy to operate, just writes, rolls right with me. Now, one other thing I want to show you that's pretty cool. Do you remember back in the day how we used to cut a broomstick and we'd stick it down there in the bottom of the track, you know, for extra security? Well, now check out what they've done. Instead of having that uh, foot bolt or, or a piece of uh, wooden dowel down there, they put it right here where it's easy to operate. Look. I just do that, now I have another locking point up here at the top, which gives me additional security if I want that extra reassurance that I know I'm gonna be safe. This door has been tested and engineered to withstand 500 pounds of pressure resistance for forced entry. So that's really high, that's really good. This door has also been tested um, with over 100,000 open and closes automatically, or automated, so they could test and see how that works. Pella says that that means you could open and close this door three times a day for 90 years and it will not fail because it's been tested to that. It's pretty cool. Now, I want you to see one other thing. I'm gonna unlock that. I'm gonna unlock this. I'm gonna open this up about four inches and I'm going to engage it into its secondary lock right there, okay? So this is open about four inches now, but yet I still have a lock there. Now, I wouldn't say I'd wanna maybe sleep with it like this because I like the idea of locking this, but let's suppose that you had a dog or a cat that likes to get out and you don't want them to get out, but you also want some ventilation. You could open this up that four inches. You could have your screen closed on the outside and not worry about your dog trying to get out. I think that's kind of cool. One more thing you should know about this is that they can put this either at the 60 inch mark or they can put it at the 42 inch mark. So that's something you might want to specify when you go to order one of these doors as to where you think you want that. Now, why would you want it at 42? Well, let's first talk about why you might want it at 60. I like the idea of little children not being able to go outside, having this up here. Now, if your kid can reach that, jump up and reach that, he, he or she probably knows they shouldn't be doing that, right? But I'm talking about little kids where now, for some reason, if, if they were to open this, you're not going to be worried about them getting out because they can't until somebody does that. So I like 60 inches for that. What I like about the 42 inches is if you ever had a, an occasion where someone who needed to be open, opening this door, but was say in a wheelchair or something like that, they could easily access that level. So you get to make those, those choices on that door. One of the things that they're really proud of in this 2.0, because there are some improvements to this, is that they have a, the lowest threshold of any door out there that, that they know of. This is a one and an eighth inch threshold. So you can see that it's not very high. And we'll get you a close up of that. And what I like about it is less chance of you tripping over the door. You know, like right now, this is actually just sitting on our concrete floor in our showroom, but you would normally have tile or wood or something coming up here to this edge. So like, as far as how much, how much does this sit above your floor line? Not much, just maybe a little bit. So I kind of like how it's nice and smooth. Now, one of the things that they do for this door, which I think is a genius idea, I love it, is they make an additional piece. It's another plate, a ramp, so to speak that connects here, that makes this a qualified ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act door. And if you've ever tried to look for an ADA door, you found that it's really hard to find ADA doors, number one. There's not a lot of choices. And then number two, for some reason, I guess because you're labeling ADA, the price seems to be much higher. In this case, you can get this as an additional piece and add it on, and it makes it an economical option to have a transitional threshold for that. You could do that right from the beginning if you wanted to, some people now are planning, you know, a lot of houses are planning for what they call aging in place, where we think, let's build a house where we know that we could stay here for a long period of time, maybe into the sunset years of our lives. And so thinking about these things ahead of time can be really helpful. And I'm so glad that Pella decided to do that because I think that really opens up, opens up another area for them in, in the market. So this is a powder coat finish on here, okay? And you can see that I have the black on black. And what I like that they've done is 
They've actually put even a black weather gasket on here. This is a black weather gasket. They have black weather stripping. Clay can get you a close up of the weather stripping so you can see that. And what I like about it is that when I go to close this door, I've got this brush on the outside. I've got this gasket on the inside. I've got a nice receiving channel of a really nice rigid product, this Duracast. And when it goes in there, I almost, I can feel, I wish you could feel, I wish you could be here. It's got like that little click like you get on a Mercedes, a Rolls, or a Bentley. It's just got that nice, I'm in there, it feels good. The lock is effortless. I love the word effortless. I hate frustration. I don't like things that don't operate well. This thing operates really well. It engages really well. It locks really well. The fit and finish on this is above typical industry standards. You can get different colors on this. You know, it comes in a black, a brown, or a white. And you can even get a two-tone where you could get a black exterior and a white interior. You get a brown exterior. Um, so combinations, color options there. You're not going to want to paint this. It is paintable because it is fiberglass. You can't paint it. I would suggest you just buy a color you like and, and keep it because you're going to get a 10-year warranty on the finish, 20-year warranty on the glass, 10-year warranty on the hardware, and a, a, a lifetime warranty on the actual Duracast material. So I'd say just buy it like it is and don't mess with it. So what else do you think you might like about this store? Do you like the size? Well, this is an eight by eight, okay? This is eight feet wide, eight feet tall. They make them just about any size you want. Their limitations are gonna be how wide they can go and how tall they can go. They can go as much as 12 feet wide and they can go as much as 10 feet tall. So this is an eight by eight. This could have been 10 feet tall. Um, they also have an another option if you needed to go 16 feet where you can get buy a separate panel that's a fixed panel that would actually mold. Mold is the word we use when we put two things together. It would mold to the end of the door. So you could get a 12 foot door with a four foot panel and you could get a 16 foot opening. I don't, I don't really think that looks as good as actually having a 16 foot door. So I would maybe skip on this door, go to another one. Or if you stand by and wait long enough, I'm not sure when it's coming. Uh, you might check because I don't know when you are watching this video, obviously but maybe it's out now. They are going to a 16 foot and that's coming soon. They've had some delays just due to production constraints. They are also upgrading some of their other products and uh, they've already upgraded the casement. We've got a great video about their casement. They're upgrading their single hung, which is coming up real soon. So all of this stuff is gonna be working together in harmony and its, and its continuity is gonna be great. One other thing that I wanna mention that's a real bonus with this product and I think you should consider it is that they make an option for blinds between the glass. You can get some blinds between the glass which is kind of cool because, you know, there's times where you need that privacy or maybe you're trying to keep the sun or something from coming in. However, it is in limited sizes. It's more in standard sizes, and they will not go uh, uh, this tall to the, the last time I looked, which was yesterday. They were only doing it uh, up to 82 inches tall. So this, that would be a six foot eight door, which is a typical size. This is a little bit taller than that. Check with your local representative. Check with us here at Houston Window Experts. We can tell you whether or not that's an option. The screen itself, they only have one option. The screen itself is a good option. They're not giving you a bad one and then charging you for an upgrade. This is a mid to upper tier product to begin with, so it's already a little bit nicer, so you're gonna get a nicer screen. Also, just for price reasons, just so you know, this is gonna be more expensive, obviously, than vinyl would be. Vinyl costs less to make because vinyl uh, ingredients are cheaper to make. If you went to buy this door, you can expect to spend about one and a half to maybe two times as much uh, compared to a vinyl door. I'm gonna use a real easy number. If a vinyl door costs a dollar, this would cost about a dollar fifty to two dollars, somewhere in that range, depending on what part of the country you're in and what kind of glass packages you put in and any upgrades, etc. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you're in the Houston area, please come by and see me. I'd love to meet you. Over a dozen brands of beautiful windows and doors in our showroom. If you live outside the Houston area, check out jeffslist.com. Hey, was there anything that you might tell me that I should have covered about this? Let me know in the comments and when I redo this video at some future date, I'll uh, answer your questions there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.